Next part of this message in this full moon is acceptance. Acceptance, y'all. So going back to the conjunction, the Gemini conjunction and the square to Saturn, and then bringing in the North Node, follow the chain here. Mars in Gemini depositing the North Node in Aries, this squaring Saturn right now. Gemini being a social energy, the South Node being within Libra, which is also a social energy. I'm calling it what it is. No one's going to admit it, but we are living in a very detached period of time. One of the things that you'll need to accept is, is the decline of social engagement. The square here is representing new ways of interacting. And pointing towards the North Node, y'all, it deals with yourself. If there are partnerships out there in which you feel like you're struggling to get, so it's not reciprocal, that person is simply reflecting back to you the energy that is needed. Yeah, we gotta live it to the sober. Think quick, you can have a drink or live sober. Ah, just know love is the remedy. No matter where I go, it's 91 to infinity. Yeah, we gotta live it to the sober. Think quick, you can have a drink or live sober. Ah, just know love is the remedy. No matter where I go, it's 91 to infinity. What's going on, world? It's your boy Gemini Brown here. Back with another episode of Nalo Kicking Knowledge. Today, we'll be discussing the upcoming full moon in Aquarius. And there's so much going on. So, let's get into it. All right, y'all. I'm getting right into this. We got some things to cover. So... We are having a full moon in Aquarius, capping off Leo season. This is occurring at 27 degrees of Leo in Aquarius. Very significant. Part of the reason why this is significant is because it's be, it's activating a T-square, including uh, Uranus, the moon, the sun, and then for the full moon, Mercury will be there as well. But there's a lot of layers to this, and I'm even going to pull up the chart so you guys can follow but i just want to give you you know a quick perspective on some things my my personal perspective some perspective you're probably not going to find from other astrologers but i really hope you consider it so we're starting with the conjunction of mars and jupiter in gemini conjunctions are times particularly via transit for new beginnings for new ventures. Mars and Jupiter in conjunction really bodes well for starting new. It's about gathering your courage, your motivation, and really being willing to stand up and fight for what you believe in, Jupiter and Mars. With this being Gemini, it also gives a boost to your ideas. So right now, I'm letting you know, during this conjunction period, it's a really good time to channel new ideas related to whatever house this is in. And because it's Leo season now, this should be connected towards our self-image. Maybe we need to change our self-image in some way. Gemini energy is also youthful. It really represents youth. And it can be correlated towards the school experience. A dope thing is that, you know, I'm here in the East Coast. We don't start the school year until Virgo season. But I know all over the country, there are people in school already. Starting this school year in those places where you began with all this retrograde energy and this conjunction in Gemini is going to greatly affect the, the students currently in school. I am predicting that this is a year in which we really see radical changes within the school system. This could be more students opting for alternative ways of learning, i.e. homeschool, finishing school early to start working. This is the year for that. If you're a parent out there, I think you really want to tune in to the best way to support your child. So as I've alluded to in my previous video, if you have a young male out there 
and it can range from ages 13 and on up and you feel like they can benefit from some male guidance, non-astrologically related, but if their verse in astrology makes it better, feel free to reach out to me. I haven't officially launched this service because of the transits and it being a retrograde, but I'm steadily developing the program. So if you out there listening, I've already had people reach out, reach out to me. I'll send you some, some info of what I'm working with, but this is one way in which I'll be utilizing the Mars Jupiter conjunction in Gemini, which is in my 10th house. So I'm going to go a little bit further with this being connected to youth, to the men out there. And part of the reason I'm doing this is because spirit has let me know the, the message is clear. If you're a man out there of a certain age, we could say from 18 to really even 40 these days, there's a real need to activate or stand firmly within your manhood and what that means to you. I am doing what I can, particularly I'm working with the youth, right? Because I've understood where my best influence resides. And, and that is within the realm of education and really with those who are receptive. But I'm telling the males out there, it's time to grow up. Part of this conjunction in this full moon is about seeing yourself in new ways. And that square to Saturn is really asking you to grow up and do the things in which you may have avoided. Obviously, I'm talking to males because I'm a male and I am more privy and I can see more how males get caught up in this. But it's real right now. If you've been out there, you've been playing that video game or you play that video game multiple times a week. Come on, man. Let it go decrease that time is, and put your energy somewhere else and see what you're able to manifest. Holla at me if you're in need though. Next part of this message in this full moon is acceptance. Acceptance, y'all. So going back to the conjunction, the Gemini conjunction and the square to Saturn, and then bringing in the North Node, follow the chain here. Mars in Gemini depositing the North Node in Aries, this squaring Saturn right now, Gemini being a social energy, the South Node being within Libra, which is also a social energy, that South Node corresponding to Venus and Virgo, okay? I'm calling it what it is. No one's going to admit it, but we are living in a very detached period of time. And one of the things that you'll need to accept is, and this is connected to Jupiter, one of the things you'll need to accept is, is the decline of social engagement. And the square here is representing new ways of interacting. And pointing towards the North Node, y'all, it deals with yourself. So, if there are partnerships out there in which you feel like you're struggling to get a, a attention um, from the person or it's not reciprocal, this that person is simply reflecting back to you the energy that is needed. So I could go ahead and tell y'all, continue, limit your social media exposure. It's adding to the confusion. With Neptune at 29 degrees right now, Social media is at the height of its deceptiveness. With the time and energy you're putting in there, it's detracting from that North Node. All right, so that's my advice to you. Now, let's get into this chart and examine some more themes here. All right, party people. So the first place I want to start here is, of course, with the sun in Leo opposing the moon in Aquarius. Now we see that the sun is conjunct Mercury here, which is retrograde. I find this to be really significant and actually giving light to more of the Aquarian themes. So how I see this opposition, y'all, is, is self versus the collective. Where do I fit in? Where is my spot within the collective sea? Aquarius represents to some extent acceptance, acceptance of the group or that feeling of, okay, I belong. But we always have to remember we can never know where we belong if we don't know who we are or where we want to go. What I feel here is a lot. 
There's a lot. And I always have to come back to the influence of Neptune at 29 degrees. There's a lot of confusion out there. And then we, of course, know that the square between Pisces and Gemini is going on. There's a lot of confusion out there. And I know that when humans are in a place of confusion, the easiest thing to do is blame others, is to project that negativity. But the hard thing to do is the hard thing going forward into what we know deep down within our hearts we need to do. The message that is ultimately being communicated here is that we need to be standing on some type of pride. It's not pride where it prevents us from changing, but the the pride within in ourselves. I, I give an example. I being someone who grew up being an athlete a thing that had a major effect upon me was traveling and realizing that, wow, there are other people just as good in other places. And from there, I just personally always developed this self-accountability. Like I owe it to myself to be the best version of myself because I know there's someone out there who is striving to do the same. Pride can work for you when you turn it into passion, when you're moving more towards like, I'm so passionate about this thing, my pride and it won't allow me to waver. So you want to be so passionate within yourself that you're willing to walk forward into the unfamiliar territory, which is truly just the creation of yourself. So as much as we hate to admit it. The key to channeling this Leo energy right now is standing firmly on your square, showing up with charisma, smiling through the bullshit, right? Doing what is best for self. Anyone out there blaming others or overextending themselves, which then leads to blaming of others, they're lost in the collective sea instead of claiming who they are. So the last thing I'll add here is that Mercury, of course, depositing this energy in Gemini right now. There's a lot of benefits to this Leo energy, but it's truly about how you see your own self-image and what you bring to the table as your astrologer. I'm leading by example. I'm like, hey, I've always been connected to the children. I know that this is where you can make a major impact because they're so impressionable. Let me do what I can do. It's about owning that, becoming fixed within there. So then when we add in the square, the T square here, this is rather simple. Whatever you want to be familiar, if you're holding on to something too tight, if you're not acknowledging the timing isn't correct for something, right? And this can even be like financially, balling on a budget, things of that nature. Uranus is going to give you that shakeup, that Uranian shock. So the advice here is really let go. Let go and go with the flow. And going with the flow ultimately will be about embracing new things, new endeavors, new attitudes, perspectives. Another way I can interpret this is like as a culture shock. A culture shock to one's ego, what is familiar? Because what Leo energy is highlighting right now is where we are fixed within our own egos. And then this square is trying to help us cultivate new values to build upon a new ego. I want to take a look at Venus squaring Mars and then triggering another T-square with Saturn here. I feel like this deals with the reality of situations. And also, I think it it deals with timing as well. So Venus opposed Saturn, a lot of times can translate to like certain sacrifices that, that need to be made. With it being Virgo and Pisces, it's like, man, I have to sacrifice this particular ideal in order to make room for this more grounded 
pursuit or effort. There's a reality that's setting in here. So this square started with the, the Jupiter, Mars, square Saturn started with like limitations, slow down, don't try to force anything. And then Venus here really is further highlighting this, but of course it uses others. So it can be a very difficult time within love right now, but I want to say this. It are it's times like this, y'all, that kind of you can if you are truly <laughs> living a, a conscious spiritual life using the astrology correctly, these are times in which you can learn to say like, "Oh wow, yeah, this is not a time to uh start a important relationship or really being able to assess the reality of the why." With Saturn being in Pisces, it's bringing this sobering effect towards <laughs> La La Land, which is Neptune, which is our deals. Sometimes we don't see things correctly, but Saturn's like, the ideal is possible, but this is what it realistically takes. Channel correctly if understood, right? If birthed into service, really, that's what your sacrifice will be, a service to yourself, which, you know, service is something bigger than you. There can be a lot of producti productivity or attracting of Venus type things, i.e. money, i.e. new ways of relating to other self, things of that nature. The core message is don't hold on. Let go and flow. All right, y'all. So these are just a couple of things that I wanted to highlight. If you are in need of a reading, check out my website, GeminiBrown.com. Check out my new album, Sunday Gemini 2, my book, Astrology of the Matrix. Till next time, peace.